Okay, ladies and gentlemen of algebra, so now we continue with unit six, talking about exponential functions. So we talked about scientific notation, so that uses exponents quite a bit. So now we're going to move on to look at what does an exponential function look like and kind of how does it behave. So exponential functions, so you're looking at something that looks like this, uh, where a is not zero and a is not one. That's a key point because think about it for a little bit. You know, what's anything, what's one raised to any power? So if I look, you know, what's, what's one raised to the third power? Well, it's just one. What's one raised to the fifth power? Well, that's just one. What, what's one raised to the 121st power? Well, that's just one. So one doesn't work as an exponential function. So if I look at four, y equals four raised to the x power. So here's kind of what I'm looking at. So think about this, start filling in the blank. Well, let's, let's let x be a couple different numbers. So let's go like negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. So think about what y is going to be then. So for negative 1, that's saying that y equals 4 to the negative 1. Well, remember, negative exponents just mean move to the bottom. So this is actually going to be 1 fourth. So that's going to be 1 fourth. So here y equals 4 to the 0, well, anything raised to a 0 power is just 1. So 1, uh, that'll be 4 to the 1st, so that's just going to be 4. 2 is going to be, I'll do this over here, 4 to the 2nd power for 16. And 4 to the 3rd is going to be 4 times 4 times 4, so that's going to be 64. All right, so if I look here, so if I look at the graph, um, so I can start plotting these points and, and kind of go from there. All right, so if I look here, I'm looking at negative 1 and 1 fourth. So I'm going to put a tiny dot right there. At 0, I'm at 1. At 1, I'm at 4. At 2, I'm all the way up here at 16. So you can start to get an idea. At 3, I'm at 64, and that's off the page. So you can start to get an idea of what this graph is going to look like. Okay, so it's going to go like that. So it's going to look kind of like that when I'm all said and done. So now, taking a look, y to the 3x, I... Same kind of idea. I usually say go one negative number or go two negative numbers and kind of give yourself an idea of what you're looking at. And again, I'm just picking these numbers here. That's not a big deal. Um, go with simple there. So 3 to the x, so 3 to the negative 1 is going to be 1 third. Uh, so 3 to the 0 is going to be 1. 3 to the first is always going to be 3. So 3 to the 2nd is, is going to be 9, and 3 to the 3rd is going to be 27. So this one's going to be 27. Now when I go to graph this, so I can look, negative 1, I'm going to be at 1 3rd, 0, I'm going to be at 1, 1, I'm going to be at 3, 2, I'm going to be at 9. 3, I'm going to be at 27. So, 27, that's way off the page. So, I start to get an idea of what this is going to look like. All right, so that's going to be kind of what it looks like. Now, if I look over here where it says y-intercept, y-intercept, remember, like anything, y-intercept is where x equals 0. So, when I put 0 in for x, what do I get? Well, I get 1. So that's going to be the case. That's probably going to be the case a lot of the time. So 4 times 2x. Now things get a little bit trickier, but I can still work with it. So again, go negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. So now look in here. Um, what I can do is just plug it in. So this is going to be, you know, 4 times 2 to the negative 1. 
So that's going to be 4 times 1 half. So that's going to be 2. You know, for x equals 0, 4 times 2 to the 0, that's going to be 4 times 1. So that's just going to be 4. 4 times 2 to the first is going to be just 4 times 2. So that's going to be 8. 4 times 2 squared is going to be 4 times 4, which is going to be 16. 4 times 2 cubed is going to be 4 times 8, so that's going to give me 32. All right, so now y-intercept, you know, where does it cross the y-axis? What happens when x equals 0? Well, that's just going to be 4. But notice that's also kind of what's in front there. So now I'll take a look and graph my points. At negative 1, I'm at 2. At 0, I'm at 4. At 1, x is 1, y is 8. 2, 16. So as you can see, this one's going to go a lot steeper than usual. Okay, so that should just about finish up this one. We'll move on. Um, y equals 6 to the 1 3rd x. Um, this one kind of presents an interesting situation here because of that one-third. Um, if you remember, with, with a one-third, anytime you make it bigger, anytime you square that, it's going to be a smaller and smaller um, situation here. So if I look, um, so if I kind of mess with this a little bit, I put in, so if I put in like negative one, zero, one, two, three, so take a look at kind of what happens here. So negative 1 becomes 6 to the, times 1 third to the negative 1. So that kind of, what happens is this. Um, you get 6 times 3 uh, because this flipped over is going to be just equal to 3 over 1. So that's going to be 18. 6 times 1 third to the 0 is going to be 6 times 1, so that's going to be 6. So 6 times 1 third to the first is going to be 2. 6 times 1 third to the second is going to be 6 over 9, so that's going to be 2 thirds, and so on and so forth. So this is going to be 2, so this is going to be 2 thirds, this is going to actually be 2 ninths. So my y-intercept is going to be 6. That's what my y-intercept is going to be. So now when I go to graph this thing, so negative 1, I'm up here at 18. At 0, I'm at 6. At 1, I'm at 2. At 2, I'm at 2 thirds. And at 3, I'm here. So it ends up looking like this. It ends up looking like a mirror reflection of what the other one looked like. So that's kind of what that one-third does. It kind of takes their picture and gives you a mirror image of what, you, what we had for. So let's see what happens when I mess around with this a little bit. So 2 to the x plus 3. Well, think about this. So I've got to take care of this 2 to the x first and then add 3. So if I go negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. And again, this is just a good four or five numbers to kind of give me an idea of what this graph is going to look like. So 2 to the negative 1 plus 3. Well, 2 to the negative 1 is really 1 half, plus 3 is going to be 3 and a half. 2 to the 0 plus 1, I'll do it up here, 2 to the 0 plus 3. Well, 2 to the 0 is really 1. So that's going to be 4. So if I do 1, 2 to the first plus 3 is going to be 5. Now here, 2 to the second plus 3 is going to be 7. 2 to the third plus 3 is going to be 11. So this one is actually going to take, so, wait, so y-intercept is 4. So when I go to graph this, this one's going to not go up very fast. So at negative 1, I'm at 3 and a half. 0, I'm at 4. 1, I'm at 5. 
two, I'm at seven. Three, I'm at 11. So a couple things happen. One, this moves up. This entire graph moves up, which is what the three does. And with the two here, it means it doesn't go up very quickly. So here, a couple things are going to happen. One, um, this means it's going to be flipped around. It's going to go really slow. The negative one means it's going to be the entire thing is going to be moved down. But let's take a look. So negative one, zero, one, two, three. So when I throw each one of these in here, so let's take a look. Two times 0.5 raised to the negative one minus one. So 0.5 to the negative one. So that's like one half to the negative one, which means I flip it over. So this will be two times two minus one. Okay, so this will really be four minus one, which will give me three. So a negative one, I'm at three. At zero, okay, so that's going to be two times 0 0.5 to the zero minus one. Point, anything to the zero is just one, so this is really like saying two minus one, so that's going to be one. So y-intercept is going to be one there. All right, so two times 0 0.5 to the first minus one. Well, two times 0 0.5 is just one minus one is going to be zero. So then if I give myself a little room here to do two here, let's, let's do two right here. So we'll go two times 0 0.5 raised to the second minus one. So this becomes two times one fourth minus one. Well, this is gonna be one half minus one. So that's gonna be negative one half or negative 0.5. All right, and then for three, let's do that one down here. Two times 0 0.5 to the third minus one. Well, 0 0.5 to the third is actually gonna be one eighth minus one, two times one eighth, this becomes one fourth minus one. So this is gonna be a negative three fourths or a negative 0 0.75. So when I go to look at this on the graph, this is gonna look really, really weird. So at zero, I'm at one, at one, I'm at zero, two, I'm at negative one half, three, I'm at negative three fourths. So this is gonna look kinda of like this. So that's what that graph is going to look like. Okay, so movie ticket sales decrease each weekend after an opening. The function 49.9 times 0.692 W models the earnings of a popular movie. In this equation, E represents earn millions of dollars, and W equals O presents opening weekend. So graph the function, estimate how much movie, bleh, how much money the movie made the opening weekend. All right, so zero, one, two. Zero represents day zero. So this is the day it came out, first week. So it's like Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And I want to add those three up. So if I put zero in there, that's just going to be 49.9. 49.9. If I put one in there, that's going to be 0 0.692 raised to the first times 49.9. So this one's going to be 34.58. So then when I do the same thing with 2, I'm going to get 0.692 raised to the second times 49.9. So that's going to be 23.8953. Sum total is just going to be add those three up. So in the opening weekend, it's going to be 108.326. But remember, this is in millions. So opening weekend is going to be $108 million, roughly. So if I want to graph this, so this would be 0, 1, 2. And I can go up by, you know, every other one is 10, so 20. 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, whatever. So at zero, I'm at 49.7. That's right about there. At one, I'm at 34.58. So that's right about there. 
two of them at 23, so it's right about there. So you can start to get an idea that this is going to eventually go like this. So that's kind of what that graph looked like. All right, so the value of a car decreases as soon as it's driven off the lot. That's a true statement. So this kind of models your depreciation of your car. So original cost is $25,000. Graph the function, estimate its value after five years. So you want to go one, two, three, four, five. So at zero, we start at 25,000. So I'll go like five, 10, 15, 20, 25. We're going to start right there. So zero, one, two, three, four, five. So after one year, all you're doing is taking 0.82 to the first times $25,000. So you're going to take 0.82 times $25,000. So that's going to be 20500 So after one year, it's down to almost $20,000. After two years, you're going to do that same thing, 0.82 squared times $25,000. Oops. So this is going to be 16810 That's going to be right in that neighborhood. There's that one. So three years, same idea, 0.82 raised to the third power times $25,000. So that's going to be down to $13,784.20. Do it again. So that's going to be down to $11,303. And then one more time, bottom one, 0.82 to the fifth times 25000 This is going to be down to $9,268.50. So after five years, it's only worth $9,262.68. So filling in the rest of it, three is going to go at $13,000, which is right about there. Four is going to be at $11,000, which is right about there. So it's going to look like this. Sorry, forgive my graph. It's not very good. But it should look something like that. All right, so taking a quick look, does this chart show exponential behavior? How do I know? Well, I know, am I multiplying by the same thing over and over and over again here? Well, to get from 10 to 25, that's multiplying by 2.5. Is 25 times 2.5 62 and a half? Yes, it is. 62 and a half times 2.5? Yes, it is. So if I'm multiplying by a consistent basis, yes, it is. So does this one show exponential behavior? One to here, mm, that's like dividing by two. Dividing by two is like multiplying by one half. One half, one half, I'm gonna say yes. So go, go do your homework so it does not grow exponentially.